Welcome back, Stitchers. Happy Friday. Except it's not Friday, is it? It's Thursday. It is um, American Thanksgiving today. So I'd like to wish um, everyone who is celebrating down in the States a very happy Thanksgiving. I hope you have some nice plans. And if you don't have anything particular planned, then, you know, maybe we can keep each other company. I wanted to put this video out today instead of tomorrow for a few reasons. First of all being, um, well, I have a pretty busy day tomorrow, so I thought I would get this up there today. Also, because it is Thanksgiving, and I know I have a lot of friends who watch and join in the Friday night stitching party who live down in the States, and I figured you might have the day off today, and maybe, you know, that we could uh, we could hang out a day early. We could get this party started just a little bit early. So, as you can see, I am still... As I said on Monday, I'm still working on my Prairie Schooler Woodland Santa. And as you can also tell, I have not put in a single stitch since the last time I showed you this project on Monday. I have been sewing a lot this week um, in preparation for Christmas and getting all of the bags up in the shop and ready to go. Um, also, you may have noticed that I snuck in a few photos at the beginning of this episode because I wanted to show you something special that I did. I was, um, those who follow my Instagram or Facebook page, um, you will have already have seen this, um, but for those who don't, I was in the drive through the other day and, you know, when I got my coffee, I, I don't go through the drive through every day, just, just to be clear. Um, sometimes it's a special occasion and when it's a special occasion, I like a nice coffee through the drive through either Starbucks or Tim Hortons. And they have their holiday cups out and every year that is, it's such a nice treat. And I don't know why I look forward to the holiday cup, but they're so fun. And I think it's just a signal that, you know, the holidays are approaching and, you know, everybody's in a little bit better mood. And let's face it, the cups are just fun. And so I was sitting there and I thought, oh, you know, I, I got my holiday cup and that's so great. And then I thought, you know, Evertote needs a holiday bag. We need an annual holiday bag. And so I went home and I already had a little bit of um, of the fabric that I used in my stash. And so I put together the 2017 annual Evertote very first holiday wedge tote set. And who knows if it'll be a wedge tote set next year? I don't know. We'll see which way the wind is blowing. Maybe it'll be a cross stitch tote or, you know, some other kind of bag that we come up with in between now and then. So it is, um, I put up 13, I could make 13 from the supplies that I had, like I could make 15, but Kathy and I are going to keep a couple because they're awesome. And, uh, and then I said I was going to put the others up for sale, uh, thinking, you know, that I would then show them on the podcast on Monday and maybe you guys would think they were cool and want one for yourself. Well, they, they kind of sold out quickly, which is amazing. I mean, really fantastic. Um, I couldn't believe it. It was really, it was, it was really quite special for me. Um, and then I thought, well, you know, if people really like them, then maybe a few more people were disappointed that they didn't get one. And you've got, well, you can find a little bit of time next week to make a few extras. So that's what I've done. I've put a few extras up in the shop. They are not made yet. I am making them as I go and they will all be shipped out in the mail by December the 1st. Sorry, wait, December the 5th. That's the following Tuesday, December the 5th. So they'll all be in the mail by then. And, um, 
yeah. So if you if you want to check it out, it's double double triple and that takes you to the Etsy page where I've got them listed. And you can see different views of the of the bag, the lining and stuff. Okay, enough about that. Um let me see. I gotta I have to count here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then okay. Just making sure I'm on track. Um, so yes, there has been a lot of sewing going on and a lot of teaching and a lot of um, family stuff. My sister-in-law is here from Italy, so we've been visiting and as always, it's so nice to see her and get together, um, hanging out with, uh, with the family. So teaching, sewing, and at night when I sort of, before I collapse for sleep, I have been putting in a few stitches on my Little House Needleworks, the, the, rail, the railway station that I showed on Monday. Oh, that is an addictive piece to work on. I love it. I am really loving it. So I'm hoping that when I show it to you on next, next week, there will be quite a bit of progress on that. So speaking of next week's episode, just like today's was a little funny, next week's episode, I have some things going on on Monday. Um, so Monday's episode is actually probably going to appear on Tuesday morning. I will be recording the video on Monday, but I don't have enough time to edit it and upload it uh, before, you know, well, before midnight. And I'd like to sleep at some point. So I will record it on Monday. And then I'll put it up first thing on Tuesday morning. So if you are able, then, you know, watch when you can. That would be great. What am I doing here? Right. Okay. See, it is hard to talk and stitch sometimes when you don't have a plan. So speaking of stitching together and stitching weekend parties, um, there have been a few threads lately in the Stitch Mania group on Facebook about, um, you know, people looking for specifically for Stitch With Me videos. And I think that's wonderful. I really think that's wonderful that people are sharing what they like. Um, some people are looking for videos that uh, do not have people talking that are just people stitching. And I think as you all well know by now, that is not me. So um, it was really nice. Uh, lots of people chimed in with suggestions for this person to help her find um, channels that were, you know, what she was looking for. And I thought that was great. So if you know of a Stitch With Me video that you really enjoy watching, pop it in the comments below. And then I'll make up a list and I will uh, mention those on Monday, Monday, Tuesday. So I know that Stitcherista does a fairly consistent one. Is it every Friday now? I've missed the last couple because, um, well, my last comment about sewing and, and family holds true for the last couple of weeks. It has been um, full, a full schedule. So I really would like to catch up with hers this weekend. And also um, a little something to put in your ear. Those of you who watch Ginger Gerald Stitcher, who has a fantastic channel and a fantastic floss tube video podcast, um, he is considering doing a Stitch With Me video. And I think that we should all encourage him to do that because if you've seen his projects, um, Henry the eighth and, uh, right now he's, he's stitching let freedom ring, which is massive. And I mean, his stitching is amazing and you know, he's just a nice guy and his videos are fun. So I think we should all encourage him to get that recorder going and join in the party. Speaking of the party, there have been a lot of people, I think we're past 150 now, which is amazing, 
on the Facebook group. And that is, if you're looking for us, it's called Friday Off the Grid on Facebook. And it is a closed group. So you send a request, which comes to me. And then um, I, you know, as long as you're not a weirdo who's not a stitcher and just looking to join, you know, groups because you're a weirdo, well, it's kind of easy to tell when you're a stitcher. We're usually in the same group or such, so on and so forth on Facebook. And then I approve your request and then you're part of the crew on Facebook. Now to that end, um, just a little bit of housekeeping about Facebook. Um, I have been uh, sent a few friend requests on Facebook and this is, this is the, guys, this is really hard for me to say this because my natural inclination is to be friends with everybody. You know, I, I want to be friends with everyone. And if you're a stitcher, I know you're a good person and I want to hang out with you, you know, and stitch together. But my personal Facebook page, um, well, let's face it, it's mostly full of muggles and they already think I'm crazy. And not only that, I, I tend to keep that page sort of uh, private. So if you set, have sent me a friend request and I have not responded, I just wanted to take a moment and let you know why. It's not because I don't think you're a good person. It's not because I don't want to be friends with you. It's that I think that um, I need some little tiny place on the online world where um, it's not stitching. Does that make sense? I know it seems crazy, right? Because my entire life is stitching. But oh, anyways, I hope you guys understand and... Um, can can respect that and I really I really appreciate that and I wanted to thank you for those that who had sent me friend requests um, that you know it was it was really kind but I wanted you to understand why I maybe hadn't answered so thank you so that takes care of that um, what else I have a little list again today so I remember what to say? Oh, I guess I think I should check the pattern. Where am I? Uh oh. Okay. I have to fix, not fix, add something in. Right. Okay. So, um, a few comments over the last week since last Friday and since Monday have come in as usual. I have been enjoying every single one of them. Um, you know, YouTube has a, an app specifically for people who put who people who upload videos. It's called the creator app. And that's how I log in and check, you know, the stats on the videos and who's, uh, who's left me comments and things like that. But for some reason, the app does not allow me to use the little heart when you love someone's, you know, when you, when you push a little heart for someone's comment, it only allows me to push the like button. And I don't like that. I don't, that to me is kind of, it's generic. It's sort of like, that's what I would do on someone else's comment on someone else's channel not, you know, the comments that you guys are leaving specifically for me. I want you to know that it was from me. And when I use my computer, I can get the little heart icon when I like the comments. But for some reason in the creator app, it doesn't allow me that option. And that is how I read all of your comments because I check in um, at night before I go to bed. And that's when I read all the comments. And so that's kind of why I haven't been commenting or hitting that like button because, well, it's a bit disappointing to me that I can't um, hit the little heart. So anyways, that's why. But I do read them and I do make note of the things that we need to talk about. 
um, nice comments that were left or questions that were asked, things like that. If you have a question that I haven't answered yet, uh, send me an email, caroline at evertote.com. I'm always happy to get your emails. Um, so to that end, my first comment that I wanted to uh, mention because it totally made my day was Lily at 42 stitches. And I, you guys, I'm actually going to read you this comment. Okay. Because that's how awesome it is. Lily at 42 stitches says, please take this as a compliment because it's the only way I mean it. Okay. So that now I'm interjecting here. It sounds kind of ominous, doesn't it? You think, all right, there's a backhanded compliment coming here. So please take this as a compliment because it's the only way I mean it. This reminds me, now she's talking about my Stitch With Me video. This reminds me of watching Bob Ross. I have high regard for Bob Ross. I tell you, I laughed pretty hard when I got that comment because I, I don't know. I think most of you probably know who Bob Ross is. He's the man who was known for his very gentle uh, scenery painting pictures and he would you know teach people how to how to paint um, I think there's even a you can get a little emo a little Bob Ross emoji um, anyways I was I did take it as a compliment so thank you Lily I thought that was pretty awesome to be compared to listening to Bob Ross so thanks for making my day definitely took it as a compliment um, let's see what else. Um, Mary, Mary was very nice on Monday. I said that now there's two Marys that I'm thinking of here. This particular Mary, uh, on Monday, I didn't record the video of, uh, with, of my face with my face in it because I was, you know, and, and I don't know if you can hear in my voice. I do have a bit of a cold. And on Monday, that was the sort of the day that I was coming down with it. And you know, the first day of a cold, when you just feel like uh, achy and, you know, nothing is, nothing is sort of right with your world. And so that's what was going on on Monday. It was just coming down with a bad cold. And I now have the bad cold, but it's never usually as bad as that first day. So anyways, Mary said that she wouldn't mind if I did a video without makeup and in my jammies because she just enjoyed the videos that much that she wouldn't mind. And I thought that was pretty sweet. And maybe one day we should have a pajama party. You know, everybody should just come to the podcast in their pajamas and I'll record in my pajamas. I might have to buy some proper pajamas. I don't think you'd want me to record a podcast in the pajamas I wear now. They're not very suitable. Not that they're lacy or lingerie or anything. They're just... Well, they're a bit old and ratty. Not very nice. I deserve nicer pajamas. Really, I should go out and buy some. Leads me off into a tangent. Thanks, Mary. So because of Mary, I'm going to go out and buy some new pajamas. That would be nice. Uh, the other Mary that I was thinking of, uh, Ma the other Mary, you used to raise and breed golden retrievers. And you, you, every episode, leave me the nicest comments. And I just wanted to say thank you for taking the time to, to write to me. And, and really, Mary, you're one of a few that, um, that take the time to do that. And it's really appreciated for everyone. So thank you very much. And can you imagine, can you imagine breeding golden retrievers? Oh, I think I would just go crazy because I would want to keep them all. They're just such a beautiful, amazingly gentle dog. Harry is all get out. I'll tell you that. We have hair where there shouldn't be hair in this house, but that's okay. She's worth it. So that was the, that was Lily and the two Marys. And what else did I want to mention today? There was, um, one more, and this one was from Lynn. 
Lynn, I, and I hope I'm pronouncing your last name right. I'm going to guess at it. I'm going to say Benchich, Lynn Benchich. I think that's I think that's pretty accurate. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Lynn had a few questions. She wanted to know, uh, first of all, when I stitch with a Q-snap, do I hold it in my hands or do I use a frame? And the answer to that is that it depends on the Q-snap. Regular Q-snaps, I just hold in my hands. Um, so I have a few, I have an eight inch square, I have an eight by 11, and I have an 11 inch square. I think I have an 11 by 17 as well, but you know, I rarely use that one. I find it really awkward. I think that's when, you know, having a some type of a stand would be would be good, but I don't. Um, so I I do use the Q snaps in my hands, but I also own something a product made by Charles Craft, and it is a Q snap. You know, it looks like PVC piping almost that's set up together in like a little frame that sits on the table. And so it's actually got like two Q snaps on it, a smaller one and a bigger one. And then they're connected by these two little elbow joints. And so you can rest it on the table and stitch two handed using, you know, this, this product. So that's the, what I'm using. That's what Dido is on. And I can use that in bed or I can use it on the table. Um, it's good for, for, for lots of things. The only thing that annoys me about that stand though, is that the fabric, of course, because of the elbow joints, they get in the way of the fabric. So you don't have four full sides of, you know, I don't know how to describe it. The elbow joints get in the way so that the fabric is slightly open on the corners and that creates a little loose tension in the edges, if that makes sense. But it works and I use it. So, um, so there you go, Lynn. I hope that, op that answered that question. The other question Lynn had was about uh, she liked the demonstration that I did with the stitching one over two or two over two or one over one on even weave. Uh, and what else did I do it on? I did. Oh yeah. I was on even weave, wasn't it? And she wondered about one over one on linen because she said she had a hard time seeing the nine squares. Well, Lynn, it's very simple. Um, and I, I don't have, this is the, this is terrible fabric to try and show you one over one because it is so small. Um, if it was a 28 count or bigger, it would be easier. But basically, if you understand one over one on even weave, it's exactly the same on linen. You don't, you don't think about it as nine holes. You think about it as four holes. So you it's 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 just a little teeny square just four holes top right top left bottom left bottom right that's it and one strand it's a teeny weeny weeny little stitch especially if, if you're on a higher count fabric um and that's that so it's pretty straightforward uh let's see i think there was just one more, just one more. Allison, Allison O. Allison was the one who said, and I brought this up in the last episode, that wasn't it funny that I had said we were stitching to a, you know, we were stitching together and I was working on a, I think I skipped a, did I? Yeah, I did. Shoot. This is the only downside to having the loop at my top. It's hard to, it's hard to rip out because you have to be very careful and sort of unsew. And if you get it wrong, oh, I got it. Then you're just going to sew that thread in backwards and then it's a real mess. And what, what I have to do then 
is I have to clip. So I just remove the needle um, on so uh, on. I rip it out and then I'll thread the two halves back in and continue on so I don't waste that thread. That's the only time that that is uh, a bit of a problem. But anyways, um, so Allison made the comment, you know, wasn't it funny? One week it was Santa's coat and the next week it was a reindeer's backside. And um, she, she was so funny. She said that she was really hoping, and I think this was a wink, wink, nudge, nudge, that I would change my mind today and stitch something like the ink circles so that she could tell her friends that she was doing something, you know, she was stitching along with a friend who was, who was stitching, um, sorry, my phone battery is going low. Well, we should still be okay for a little while. Um, that she was stitching something that sounded cool and mysterious and not a reindeer's butt. So anyway, there you go. So is everybody full of turkey? Those of our friends in the States who have eaten their full fill of turkey and stuffing, what are some of your favorite family recipes that you like to eat? Are you the main meal preparer or is someone else in your family responsible for that chore? I've been seeing a lot of pies being baked on Instagram. They make me hungry, especially the pecan pie. Pecan pie is my absolute favorite. Oops, it's hard to see this brown. There. Uh-oh. Nope. That's right. That's strange. Anyway, I think I missed the one before. But you know what? Three feet away, no one's going to tell. No one's going to be able to tell. We'll just leave it. There we go. So the Black Friday sales are happening tomorrow. We have them up here in Canada as well. Um, Black, Black Friday sales for us generally start today on the Thursday and go all through the weekend. Um, I ha You know, I have maybe a little different perspective of Black Friday sort of mayhem and wanting to get the lowest price and you know I I hesitate to discuss it or you know to, to to talk about it but I think that you know I'm not lecturing anybody if you want to go shopping on Black Friday that's of course your prerogative and you're right it's your money I'm not gonna tell you how to spend your money but I thought maybe I might offer a slightly different viewpoint and you know, I, I don't think that, uh, well, I should start by saying I have a bit of a background in retail, in that small business retail, in that my husband and his business partner have owned a small business here in London for the last 25 years. Um, myself, <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, when was it? 2004, 2003, 2004. I owned and operated a low carb and sugar free retail store. So I was a specialty food store and I was only open for, for about two years. In fact, it was probably less than two years. Part of that time was online and, um, and let me tell you, I am a huge supporter of small business, local retail. You all hear me talk about Thread and I every chance I get. And the reason for that is 
I know what it's like. I know how hard it is to compete with the box stores. It is, it's practically impossible to compete with the larger retailers. And, you know, how many people have said to me, you are so lucky that you have a local needle workshop. I used to have one close to me, but it closed down and it's not there anymore. And now I have to order everything online and I can't see anything. I can't touch anything. I can't feel anything. Or I have to go to, you know, insert big box store here and you know, they never have this, what I want, or the quality of their fabric isn't very good, or no one really knows what they're talking about. And that is a direct correlation between people choosing the cheap alternative. And and I don't mean cheap as in what you're buying is a cheap product, but not paying what it's worth. And I don't talk about the worth of the material that you're buying. I'm talking about, you know, when I walk into Thread and I and I want to choose a fabric, I know that Kathy can tell me all of the differences between the different fabrics. I am paying for her knowledge. I am paying for her time, for her care and her customer service. And... I am paying for the fact that I can walk into a store and I have all of those options and beautiful things at my fingertips if I want them. So I'm going to get off my little soapbox now and I'm just going to ask that maybe, you know, if you're considering on really spending a lot of money tomorrow on stitching supplies, that maybe you consider, qual um, you know, throwing a few dollars towards a small business, maybe buying less quantity and choosing to spend a few of those dollars at somewhere, you know, where it actually makes the difference to, to a small shop, because it really can make a difference. To tell you the truth, I actually live across the street from a Michael's, literally across the street. And I do shop there. I buy certain things there. I buy, um, sometimes I'll buy sewing thread, you know, for my sewing machine. Sometimes I will buy um, lobster claws for the little charms that I put on the bags if I've run out because I actually have a supplier that I order from out in Prince Edward Island. And um, so when I run out, I will go over to the Michaels and I will buy those things. But I refuse to buy any of my stitching supplies there, not even DMC, even though the DMC is cheaper. I just don't buy it there because I go to Thread and I, I walk in the door and there is the face of a woman I have known for a really long time. And I want her to stay in business for a really long time. So anyway, okay, I'm done. Thank you for listening to me. I appreciate it. <sighs> Look at, I'm almost done. His front, what do you call that? Haunch? Is that the right word? He's definitely a tripod now. He needs his little hoof on this foot. And then that'll be done. I think one, two, three. I'm just going to finish this thread. And then I think I'm going to have to go because even though it's a holiday in the States today for Thanksgiving, in Canada, it is not so much. We celebrated our Thanksgiving a month ago. Our Thanksgiving is at the end of October. And so my kids were at school today, and my son is almost done, and I'm going to have to go and pick him up. I 
I really don't want to stop stitching though, I'll tell you that. Just a few more. Please join in the party group on Facebook. Just the projects that people have been working on are astonishing. I mean, just beautiful, beautiful stitching. And everybody is so friendly, so friendly. And we're gonna keep it that way, right? Everybody's gonna be nice. Which is awesome. Look at that right up to the end. I hate to waste floss. Are you the same? I really hate to waste floss. And the longer pieces I will sometimes use as um, detail detailers. Is that what they're called? You know when you have to um, bury a thread in the back that's too short to put a needle on it? There's a way to um, sew it in in the back by using another little piece of thread. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, let me know in the comments and I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you next time. You may have noticed that I did not get an English paper piecing video out this week. Well, you would be right. It didn't happen. Um, it just wasn't a good week for it. I'm hoping for next week, but I have a funny feeling it's not going to happen because I have a mammoth amount of sewing to do next week. So I have a feeling it's probably going to be the week after that. Once these, um, once these holiday kit bags go out and the Fiber Friends winter kit, once those go out, I'm probably going to not put anything new in the shop until January. Um, there will still be bags. The shop won't get closed or anything like that. Um, but I won't be making anything. I'm going to concentrate on sewing and getting ready for Christmas and... Uh, sorry, not sewing, stitching and knitting because I have a contest to win, folks. That shawl is not going to knit itself. And, you know, as far as I can tell, I think Louise is ahead of me. So I've got some knitting to do this weekend as well. I hope you all enjoyed your time together. I think I did, I made a little bit of progress today. I am going to keep working on this piece right up until Christmas. I would like to finish this particular pattern by this Christmas um, end, and, uh, but I won't be doing it again on the stitch along. And Allison, you'll thank me next week, I'm sure. I'll stitch something a little more interesting than a reindeer's leg. How about that? Um, thank you very much. Thanks for all the comments and the subscribes and the likes. And um, you can find me on Instagram at Off the Grid Needle Arts. And also the Evertotes is at Evertotes. What else? You know, I have a blog and I always say I have a blog, but I really, I barely put anything on it because I tell you, social media takes a lot of time. And I like to answer people and I like to look at your pretty pictures and comment on everybody else's stuff. And I'm running out of time. It, it's a, it's a good problem to have, you know, all of these nice things to look at. So just a reminder, and I will mention this every episode that I put out on December the 16th, we are starting, um, a stitch along for ink circles, tapestry design. And, uh, if you want to check out my last episode that came out on Monday, I showed the pattern and the threads that come with that pattern and the linen that I have chosen to use for that pattern. There's a number of us who are joining in together. There is a hashtag. I will edit it in on Monday, Tuesday's episode. You'll see it then. And, um, you know, maybe if you've got it in your stash and you'd like to join in, I'd love to have you. And, you know, we could, we could take that over into the Facebook group as well. We could, we could talk about the stitch along on the Facebook group as well. I think there's at least a couple people there who are also on Instagram. Oh yeah. Well, of course there are. I'm on Instagram and Facebook, so I'm sure you are too, but lots that aren't. So, um, I think that's it. Today was a bit scattered. 
I'm feeling, you know, I've been taking some cold medicine, so I apologize if today was a little more all over the place than usual. And um, I hope you didn't think I was lecturing you about small business and, and big box stores and things like that. I, it, I didn't mean it as a lecture. I hope you didn't take it as such. I hope you just took it as friendly conversation and just some food for thought. And that's all. Um, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I know many of you are having a little holiday weekend. I know many of you are spending the weekend in your pajamas with your stitching. And I can't think of a better way to spend a weekend. That is just, in my mind, a hot cup of coffee, pajamas, a cozy blanket, and my stitching. And I could just sit there for hours, happily content. So I hope you find some time for yourself this weekend. And I'll see you on, well, I'll see you on Tuesday morning, but I will be talking to you on Monday. And I'll see you next week. Happy weekend and happy stitching.